What's up guys, this is Cody here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the top 30 hidden features in iOS 9. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first one I want to talk about is low power mode. So you can see right here if we go into our settings and then we tap on battery, you'll notice that we have a toggle right here. So if we toggle that on, this is basically going to reduce the performance and network activity in order to extend your battery life. So when you turn this on, mail fetch, background app refresh, motion effects, and all animated wallpapers are going to be disabled. You'll also notice right up here that we have a yellow battery. So that's going to indicate that you have low power mode on. But according to Apple, turning that on is going to give you an additional three hours of battery life. Next up, we have the iCloud Drive app. Now this is actually hidden by default, but if you go into your settings here, you tap on iCloud, and then you tap on iCloud Drive, you can actually toggle this on right here. So if we toggle that on, you can see that if we go back and we swipe over, you'll notice that we have the iCloud Drive app allowing us to access our iCloud Drive directly from the home screen. Now also in the settings, you can see right here, if we go ahead and open that up, if we swipe down, we have search settings. So we can just tap right up here and then let's say that we were looking for some camera settings. Well, we can just type in cam and you can see that we have multiple camera settings right here. So if you wanted to go into your restrictions and you know check those out, you can just enable that, type in your passcode and then you can start to configure that however you'd like. Next, we have a new shift key. So you can see right here, if we open up our notes, you'll notice that all of the keys on the keyboard are actually lowercase and that's because the shift key is turned off. But if we toggle that on, you can see that we all have capitalized letters now telling us that we have the shift key on. So now no more confusion whether the shift key is on or off. Now we have quite a few hidden features in the Photos app and you can see right here if we go ahead and tap on the Photos app that if we select a photo that we can actually use this scrubber right down here to cycle through these photos as you can see. So that's just going to make navigating your photos a whole lot easier rather than having to swipe each one every single time. Now another hidden feature in the Photos app is you can actually swipe down on a photo in order to go back. So you can see just like that. That's going to bring me back to all of my photos right there. Now another cool feature is how easily it is to select multiple photos. So we just tap on select right up here and then we can actually just drag our finger and you can see that if we go down just like that, then it's going to select the entire row just like that. Of course, you can always just go diagonal too, just depending on how you want these all set up. So that makes everything a whole lot easier. Now, once you select those, you'll notice that I have eight selected right here. Let's say that we wanted to actually, we're going to click cancel that and then we're going to select just a bunch of photos. So we're just gonna go down just like this. So I have 29 photos selected and you'll notice when I hit the share button that we can actually email all of these at the same time. So that's basically going to get rid of that five photo limit sending through mail. So you can see right here that they're all attached and we can send those off very simply and easily. Now another cool feature in mail is if you try to send a message that's too big for mail, you can see right here if we tap on send, you'll notice that it's going to ask me first of all, how big do I want to send these? Like what size? So I'm going to do actual size and it's going to tell me that I can actually use mail drop in order to send this. So normally you wouldn't be able to do this just because the files are too big, but you can do this now with mail drop. So if you just tap on that, then that's actually going to use iCloud in order to send this message. Also in the mail app, you can see right here, if we just tap and hold, then we hit this tiny little arrow right over here on the right, you can see that you can add an attachment. So if you tap on that, this is going to allow you to add an attachment from your iCloud drive. Now I don't actually have my iCloud drive set up, so I don't have any files here, but that's exactly how it works. Now also in the Photos app, if you actually wanna hide a bunch of photos, you can do this very easily just by using that select method that I just talked about, but we're just gonna tap on this entire section right here. And you'll notice once these are all selected or the photos that you wanna hide are selected, you just hit the share panel and then you just hit hide. So if you tap on hide, you can see all these are going to be hidden if I just hide 373 photos by tapping that right there. Now another cool hidden feature is the back to app or back to search feature. So you can see right here, if we just swipe over here, and let's just say that we're going to tap on one of these uh, news articles. Now you'll notice right up here at the top that we actually have a back to search button. So once we tap on that, after we're done doing whatever we're doing here, if I just tap cancel, you can go ahead and read all this. And then you just hit the back to search and it's gonna bring you right back to where you were. Now this is gonna work in applications as well, so just keep that in mind. Of course, we also have the redesigned app switcher. So if we pull that up, you can see that we have larger cards and our uh, icons are right up there at the top rather than at the bottom. Of course, this still works just like it does in iOS 8, so you can just swipe up to close out of applications. The only difference is that we have the springboard all the way to the right rather than all the way to the left. Also, we have that nice little fade out right there in the background, so that looks really nice. Siri also got a little bit of a makeover, as you can see right here. If you have the Apple Watch or if you've actually seen Siri on the Apple Watch, and you'll notice that this looks very familiar, but this is 
definitely different for iOS 9 and I think it looks pretty good. Now something we've already had on the iPad but we didn't have on the iPhone is the side switch option. So you can see right here if we just go into our settings in general and then we swipe down here you can see we can use the side switch to lock rotation or to mute our device. So it's just talking about this switch right here. So you can see if we just tap on lock rotation and if we swipe this you can see just how that works right there. So that's pretty cool giving us the option to do just that. Now you also notice right here if we tap on touch ID and passcode that we have a six digit passcode right here. Now you don't have to have a six digit passcode, you can actually tap on change passcode and then type in your passcode here and then you can tap on passcode options if you want to change this back to the four digit numeric code. So you can do that just right there. Now another feature we haven't had on the iPhone is being able to group notifications by app. So you can see right here, all you have to do is go into your notifications, tap on a group by app, and now no longer will it be grouped in the order that you received them, but now by application. Now if we go back here and we go into general, and then our auto lock features right here, you can see that we now have 30 second auto lock. So it used to be just one minute was the quickest or the earliest that you could actually auto lock your device, but now we have an option for 30 seconds if one minute was too long. Now if you're actually sick of all the vibrations on your device, you can go back here into accessibility and then swipe down here to vibrations and you can turn that off. So you just toggle that off right there and that's gonna turn off all vibrations. This is also going to turn off the vibrations for emergency notifications such as amber alerts and weather alerts. Now if we're in the settings here and we tap on general and then go into accessibility again, you'll notice when we scroll down here, we're gonna be looking for touch accommodation. So they're off right now, but you can see that we have three options right here that basically allow us to do three different things, such as hold duration, as well as ignore repeat. So if you hit or tap multiple times, it's going to ignore those repetitive taps. Hold duration is obviously going to change the duration that you have to hold in order to tap. And then right up here, you also have touch accommodations that's going to adjust settings and allow you to change how the screen's going to respond to your touches. Right down here, we also have some tap assistance. We can use the initial touch location or use final touch location. So if you need accommodations for your tapping, if you have issues, then you can definitely use this to set that up. Now we also have new options in reader mode in Safari. So you can see right here, if we just tap on this, you'll notice that if we just tap on this right here, then it's going to give us some options, allowing us to change the background, as you can see right there. So it's gonna make it a whole lot easier to read at night if you wanna do that. You can also change up the font as well. So you can see that we actually have a brand new font called San Francisco, which is actually system-wide on the device, which is actually another hidden feature that's actually kind of hard to tell the difference. You can really tell a difference if you're looking at the numbers side by side. So if you take a look at the clock, then it's gonna be pretty obvious that the fonts are different, but otherwise, if you're just looking at the lettering, it looks very, very similar to the same text that you had in iOS 8. Now, if you guys watched the WWDC, then you actually saw them demonstrate using the keyboard as a trackpad on the iPad. Well, you can actually do that on your iPhone as well. So you can see right here that we're in our notes app and you use two fingers, you just press them on the keyboard and then you move it around. You can see that you're able to move that cursor wherever you want it to be. So you can just leave that right there and then make your changes. It's just a whole lot easier to use that rather than using that magnifying glass that you used to have to use. Now everybody's used the shape to undo feature on the iPhone, probably not on purpose, probably by accident, but you can actually turn that off now in iOS 9. So if you go in here into accessibility, you can actually scroll down here and turn off shake to undo right there. So you just toggle that off right there. Also here in accessibility, you can see if we just swipe up and go to assistive touch, you'll notice that we can actually customize our top level menu. So if you use uh, assistive touch, then you can see right here that you can change this up to however you like. So you can just change up the actions that you want each particular button to be. Now here in the mail app, you can actually use markup on attachment. So you can see I've attached a picture right here. So if we wanted to use markup, we would just tap and hold and then open up markup right here. So you can make all your changes right here and then send that off. So I just sent that attachment to myself. So you can see if we just tap and hold here, there's a couple things you can do. First of all, you can use markup in this as well. As you can see, you can just tap on that and use markup, or you can actually save this attachment to your iCloud drive. And you also notice here in maps that when we're getting directions to a location that we now have my home, my work, and my favorites in order to input that. So if we wanted to tap on my home, then you can see right there that it's gonna take me directly from my house to this location. Of course, you can do the exact same thing with work as well as my favorites. You also see here in the screenshot, after you synced your Apple Watch to your device, you'll actually get a little widget 
in your notification center here showing you basically battery percentage for your iPhone as well as your watch right there in the notification center. Also in iOS 9, we have battery usage details. So if you go into settings and then battery, and then you tap on usage, you'll see right here that you can actually tap on the app or the process, and it's going to display the amount of on-screen time as well as background time for each app or process. So this can be pretty helpful when you're trying to figure out which applications are draining your battery life. So I hope you guys enjoyed this top 30 features of iOS 9, and if you did, make sure you smash that like button. Of course, if you guys want to see more videos on iOS 9, everything jailbreak, as well as everything Apple, make sure you subscribe. All right, guys. Until next time, peace.